he proposed to talk something that really hits our program. program. We're talking about digital identities here, and Nikos proposed to talk about Fido keys, the promise of a passwordless future. The promise has been given several times. People announced the death of the password many times ago, and it never worked out. But it seems this time I have more confidence. I'm personally very pro-password, but I see, of course, the disadvantages. So maybe this time it works. And Nikos is presenting this for you. Nikos from Futura System, please welcome him on stage. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for the great intro, Christian. I uh, hope everyone had a great lunch um, and is ready to tackle one of the biggest problems when it comes to authentication, which is passwords. So, uh, just a small uh, agenda. Um, I'm going to discuss a little bit um, about FIDO and the problems that FIDO faces today in terms of uh, adoption and going into a nice pa passwordless future. Um, then we're going to discuss about the new kid on the block, uh, which is Paskis, uh, coming from f the efforts and work from FIDO Alliance. Uh, we'll discuss a little bit the security spectrum of the solution. Uh, we will touch upon the user experience, which is obviously one of the most important things. Uh, and we will also hint a little bit um, on the enterprise and high-value consumer use cases that are typically a little bit even uh, you know, particular to tackle. Um, so let me start um, very quickly with the FIDE authentication crash course in one slide. Um, so we have uh, a relying party. Uh, the relying party is uh, your application, right? Um, and uh, the relying party speaks WebAuthn to the client. Uh, the client can be your mobile app, your mobile browser, your uh, desktop browser, right? Um, and then the user authenticates with two types of authenticators. We have uh, the roaming or external authenticators. This is your you know, well-known physical security keys, just like this one here. Um, and you know, they go into the key fob. Um, and th this, this can be used with a multiple of devices. And then you have the platform or internal authenticators. So your computer, your MacBook, your iPhone, your Android phone acts as an embedded authenticator that the apps running on top of it can use it, uh, to, authentic can use it to authenticate using FIDO uh, and biometrics. Um, the problems now, like the, one of the main problems with FIDO and, you know, like the promise of uh, a passwordless future, uh, well, with roaming authenticators, the problem is that they cost money. Um, and, you know, uh, even if it's maybe 20 bucks, still it's, it's something that puts a barrier for the user. Uh, and if we are honest here, you probably need two of them, uh, because if you only have one and you lose it, then what do you do? You don't want to fall back to less secure authentication methods, because then you might be fist. Uh, so you need to have two keys as a backup, right? Uh, and the platform authenticators, you know, using your MacBook or your iPhone uh, as, an, as an authenticator on the platform is a great idea. But again, you need the roaming authenticator, at least one roaming authenticator in order to securely bootstrap the platform authenticator. Um, and yeah, the, com the consumers are not very interested in buying these tokens, uh, carrying them around like me. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just not, not very easy. Things are going digital. Everything is moving into your mobile phone, your driving license, your digital identity. Everything is moving you know, uh, into these kind of devices. So asking them to carry a little bit of extra hardware around, it's, it's not very uh, helpful. And in general, uh, FIDO has been, you know, all this lingo, all this terminology, WebAuthn, security keys, you know, these are all nice concepts uh, and people like me that, uh, you know, uh, work in security will like this, but, you know, for the average consumer, this means nothing, right? So, FIDO said, okay, we need to do something more. This is not working. Uh, we still need to kill those passwords. What do we do? Um, so, here's the vision. 
whatever we come up with needs to be as easy to use as a passport. Like the moment it becomes less easy, it's game over, right? So it has to have the usability uh, benefits of a password. Uh, it needs to be easy to understand, intuitive. You don't need manuals. You don't need readme guides. You, you, guides. You know, you just go to a web page and somehow intuitively you understand what you have to do. This is super important. Um, we need to leverage existing hardware, like we need to re leverage our phones, uh, our platform, the, the, the hardware that the users really have, uh, without asking them to buy extra tokens. Um, we need to be able to survive uh, cases where a device is lost or where a device is upgraded. Uh, you know, like every year or two, people buy a new phone. What happens in this case? Uh, so this is very critical to the um, you know, uh, success of this, of this system. And of course, if we're talking about replacing passwords at the global scale, you know, the new solution needs to work at the global scale. We're not talking about thousands or millions. We're talking about eventually billions of people using this technology instead of passwords. So what is a passkey? It's a noun, OK? Um, and there's nothing, like, it's not, it's not a logo, it's not a, it's, not a, uh, it's not a name, like, I don't know, a FIDO or something. It's just a noun, right? Uh, and a very one-liner definition is it's a password re re replacement that is safer, easier, and faster to use. Um, as I said, it's, it's a noun, so you can use it interchangeably with a password. So you, you say, I have a password, I have a passkey. These are my passwords, these are my passkeys. OK. Uh, just a common noun. You can see here the, you know, the play, password, passkey. This is, I guess, uh, this was a good um, inspiration. Um, and if we go a little bit deeper now and start, you know, like how do we describe um, passkeys, for example, to our friends and family? Right? Um, so a definition would be, an, an easy to swallow to definition and understand would be, you use your fingerprint or face to sign in into apps instead of using um, a password. So that would be something that hopefully, you know, the uh, average user understands. Uh, if we're talking about tech savvy people that know a little bit more about the technology and everything, uh, a passkey is a phishing resistant password re replacement FIDO credential, so it's built on top of FIDO, and it's usable across all your devices. And if we are, you know, to refine a little bit more, uh, a lot of people here, uh, are like all of us are technologists in this room, so, um, you know, essentially a passkey is a FIDO2 discoverable credential. You'll see what this means in a bit, if, if you are not familiar with the term. It requires user verification, biometrics, most often, and is backed up to, to survive device loss. So let's see how passkeys fare in terms of security. We have a line here uh, from less, less secure to more secure. Um, Passwords, OK, they exist since forever. Uh, they're not very great when it comes to security. They have other nice benefits. Uh, that's why people still use them. Um, but in terms of security, we know all the problems. Phishing is one of them, but there are multiple other problems. Um, well, we needed to do something more than passwords. So at some point, we started using um, uh, I call it conventional multi-factor authentication or traditional or however you want to call it. Um, essentially, uh, you know, this SMS OTPs, this uh, TOTPs, uh, push you get a push notification on your phone and you have to approve or reject all this kind of, of two-factor authentication that increases significantly the, um, sorry, decreases the usability aspects because now the user has to type things get his phone out, do all these kind of things. So it's not great in terms of uh, usability. And in terms of security, it definitely improves. But for example, all of these technologies can still be fixed uh, by an attacker. Uh, so after uh, some years, you know, with, uh, with FIDO, Alliance, um, they, you know, we came up with um, 
the security keys, uh, those keys that I showed you before, uh, or the platform authenticator co concept that came later as part of, um, of the FIDO2 specification. Um, these are super nice, uh, super secure. The key stays in the hardware. Um, it's great for enterprise level uh, use cases, internal employee authentication, you know, these kind of things. But of course, you know, uh, there is a, a bit of an imbalance here. It's very secure, not very usable. We explained the problems before. And you can think of these tokens as single device passkeys. OK, so it's a passkey. You could think of it conceptually that stays on this device, on this token. OK, so a passkey is essentially a is, is multi device. We, we, we don't say multi, like we're never going to tell the user this is a multi device passkey or something like that. This is for us to understand. A passkey is a key that is not bound to specific hardware, but it syncs across your devices, right? Uh, and this means, for example, uh, I have a passkey on my iPhone, it gets synced to my MacBook, uh, and so forth and so forth. So I have it on all my, automatically on all my um, devices. And even if I lose all my devices, it still exists in the cloud. Uh, when I, um, um, you know, restore from a backup or something like that, I, I, I will still have my passkeys uh, synced from the cloud. Um, this is already more secure than a lot of traditional MFA techniques, especially when it comes to phishing. Uh, this is FIDO phishing resistant authentication. Um, but of course, uh, you know, security wise, you know, people might start thinking, okay, it syncs on all my devices, so that starts becoming a little bit, you know, less secure. Um, you know, I lose control of where this key is synced across. Um, so, uh, there is an extra notion um, uh, which is called device public key, and I will explain uh, in a bit what this is, uh, which is paired up with the pass key in order to be able to uh, serve uh, higher security use cases. Uh, and I'm going to talk about it in a minute. What about the user experience? Um, the inspiration came from um, the existing password manag management UX. And when I'm talking about uh, password managers, you know, it can be standalone applications, uh, or it could be even you know, the password manager that Chrome has or Safari has, and, and so forth. And um, the idea that it like, we are exploiting the fact uh, that they use, we're exploiting the autofill part of, of, these, of, of the UX that the password managers have. So you click on the username um, um, field, and automatically you see, you know, what available passkeys you have for this uh, website. Similarly to how a password manager works, which shows you your accounts, your passwords that you have for this website. The fact that I mentioned before that the FIDO, the, the passkey is a discoverable credential, allows exactly this kind of functionality. On the client side, the browser has all the information to understand that you have a passkey for this specific website. And without even the relying party realizing or still being involved in the process, the browser can automatically uh, populate this drop down with all your passkeys so that you, you, that you can choose and log in with a you know, touch ID or, or biometric authentication. Uh, so the experience is familiar. Um, uh, the, the, the whole UI and UX, like the drop down and, and, and stuff like that, uh, are supported by the platform, by the browser, and so forth. So it's, um, you know, you, you, you don't need to do much as a developer as well. Um, and it's privacy preserving because, again, the relying party has no idea about what's happening so far until you, a user clicks on the passkey and starts the authentication process. And as I said, it's very easy for the developers. Uh, I think it boils down in the end in annotating your, you know, pass, your username and password HTML field uh, with a specific flag so that you notify a, a supporting browser that I want to use passkey authentication uh, for this form. Um, we talked a little bit about you know, uh, the credentials, the passkeys syncing uh, across devices. And this works very well if you have only Apple or only Google or only Microsoft, right? But what, about, what happens in cross-ecosystem or cross-platform, if you want, um, 
cases. So ideally, we want, and this is actually, this is like one of, it's, it's also a very, another very important uh, feature of passwords, like you can use passwords wherever, right, on any device. So we need to be able to use passkeys in the same way. Um, so if I have an Android phone, I'm, I, I should be able to log in on my Windows uh, laptop and so forth. Um, and this is actually um, uh, taken care of by the protocol specification, uh, which allows uh, a cross-device, cross-ecosystem FIDO-based authentication. Uh, I'm not gonna go into a lot of details here, but you can imagine, so, so it, it involves um, scanning a QR code and then uh, a Bluetooth communication is happening under the hood to verify the proximity of the computer, for example, and uh, the phone in this case. Um, and you can have phishing resistant file authentication cross-platform. However, this is not as usable, right? Because now I need to take my phone out, I need to scan a QR code, Bluetooth needs to happen, you know, the, the, things are starting to become a little bit less user-friendly. So we do need this in order to uh, initially um, authenticate on a different ecosystem, but that's not the end state. What we want to do is we want the ability to essentially create, if you want, a new passkey on the new ecosystem. Right? So this is how it would work. You would access uh, the application on the new device. You would use the mobile device to sign in. And then through a specific process, you would create a passkey in the new device. Right? So from that point onward, you still authenticate just by using your uh, you know, um, uh, touch ID or biometric, right? So, so you create a platform, essentially uh, authenticator or a passkey on the new device, and you don't have to deal with QR codes and taking your phone out every time still. Um, when it comes to uh, you know, all these use cases like regulated industries, uh, financial, government, um, healthcare, of course, uh, high value uh, individuals, right? Or even enterprise access. What do we do there? Because uh, yes, this is all nice and good, but again, uh, the ability that these keys sync uh, uncontrollably, let's say, if, if I can use this word, word across your devices, is not something that, you know, uh, is, is good enough for this type of use cases. So this is where the notion of device public key uh, comes into play. Uh, this is a per relying party device bound key, which is used in addition to the pass key. So it's not an, a credential by itself. It always needs to be paired with a pass key. And it gives you this extra input that it can be used uh, for risk analysis to detect you know, that this login is happening, for example, from a new device. And in this case, you might want to step up and do something more in order to make sure that this is the correct uh, user. Uh, the way it works, very briefly, um, you have your passkey. Um, it's synced uh, across your devices, right, through the cloud. Um, and then when I try to log in to this website, the website asks from the, from the phone, from my device, that it wants this device public key extra uh, feature, right? So the phone creates um, a, a, a key pair that is hardware bound on this phone. And then it sends two signatures, right? It sends the signature of the, of the, of the pass key and the signature of the device public key. Uh, and then the same will happen in the other platforms, but with different device bound public keys. So you can pretty much think of device public key as a cryptographic finger, fingerprint of some sort that you can use to, to identify new devices that the user is using um, as he's authenticating. Uh, a couple of things that are uh, not addressed by passkeys. Uh, we talked about how, um, for example, um, you know, we can bootstrap a new ecosystem. So you, we can bootstrap uh, my Microsoft laptop using my Android phone using this QR code based uh, one off uh, step. Um, but what about the ability to be able to sync 
on all my devices, even if they don't belong to the same ecosystem or platform, right? Uh, my understanding here is that uh, this is not something that it's going to be supported by the vendors and the platforms themselves, uh, but the vision here is to enable third-party solutions, uh, passkey providers, if you wish, uh, to be able to uh, manage this kind of cloud-based synchronization across um, uh, across platforms. Uh, so, for example, you could, see, you could think of your password manager now doing this job and somehow you have all your passwords everywhere, regardless of what device it is, if it's Apple or Microsoft and whatnot. Um, Passkey managers would be doing something similar in the future. Uh, you could have your own uh, Passkey manager that syncs your Passkeys uh, automatically across your devices. Uh, another, another important topic that is not touched by Passkeys themselves, uh, but it's very important, especially for industries like banking and financial uh, services, uh, it's the whole concept of uh, payment confir confirmation or um, transaction or sensitive action confirmation, if you wish, more generally. Um, this is something that is not covered by, the, by this protocol, uh, but there is a separate group uh, working on it. Uh, it's a, I think it's FIDO Alliance, uh, WU3C, and uh, EMV Co. that is working on this, and it's called uh, Secure Payment Confirmation, and it builds on top of FIDO, especially to address uh, this particular use case of payment um, confirmation. So, takeaways. Um, Passkeys are a drop-in replacement of passwords uh, with enhanced security, of course. Uh, and re really, when I say drop-in, I, I mean it. For example, um, you can even share your passkeys uh, if you want. Uh, this is a built-in feature. Um, so, you know, like you share your password, um, you know, because maybe you have a shared account, you could even share your passkeys. So they, the, the idea is really here to be, a, you know, one-to-one -one replacement of passwords. Um, it's cross-platform, cross-ecosystem. Uh, we touched a, a little bit of, uh, on this topic. The UX is familiar if you are using any kind of browser and, you know, you're using the password manager feature of the browser, you will be, you know, familiar with the, with the UX. And for higher security um, cases, we have this uh, device context, device fingerprint notion with the device public keys that go towards this direction. There, uh, we'll see how it goes. To be honest, uh, not every vendor has committed that they will implement uh, the device public key solution. So it remains to be seen whether this will, will catch up, uh, but hopefully, hopefully um, it will happen. So hello, passkeys, and goodbye, passwords, uh, hopefully. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, if you want to learn more uh, about passkeys, uh, these two links are a good starting point, and then, you know, uh, the world is yours, uh, and I'm happy to take uh, questions. Thank you very much, Nikos.